So tonight we call this pent-up dysfunction because let me know that the body of Christ is very dysfunctional. And I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, if you were to study the scripture, when Jesus was in the tomb and he was laid out, okay, you can see there are two cloths. One is folded up neatly. You guys remember this? Inside the tomb, one, the head cloth was folded up nice and neat. Okay, so the headship was restored nice and gentle, nice and clean. But the body cloth, if you go and study in the tomb, the body cloth was all messed up, like it was thrown there. Now, that tells you a whole story of why this message is what it is. Pent up dysfunction. There's, there's a lot of dysfunction in the body, but the head is solid. Okay, the headship, the authority, everything is restored by Jesus' sacrifice. So the head cloth, government in church, all of these things are restored authority to conquer the mindset. The head cloth was to cover the head. That is all good, but the thing is the body, if the body's in dysfunction, then the mindsets will be in jeopardy. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ today. No matter where you go, what church, it's always the body is kind of boss up. And for those howlies listening online, I apologize for bust up. Busted up. Bust up. Pigeon English, right? But hey, how many of you know that all of us in here, we all play a part in keeping that function correct, the headship. And if you're going to mess with heads, how many of you know that the enemy only uses people because the body, he knows the body is in disarray. He will capitalize on that and make sure everybody plays head games in church. Even though it's all restored at the top, he still likes to take the body that's all in disarray and make everybody try and wage war against each other. And I'll show you at the end of this message what we're talking about. So as we read this thing, all right, the enemy, in your notes if you're following along, is waging a war of containment. He wants to contain Christians. He wants to box you in, right? We talked about this last Wednesday. You guys remember that? However, we must not limit God and what He can do for us. Every limitation in life will first exist where? Read that in your notes. What does it say? Every limitation in life will first exist in our minds. Say it loud. Minds. Because if you're going to find out anything about the enemy, he always comes after your head first. He can't attack your body. And you know, I ministered in, on Oahu. Uh, Waimanalo alone. Poo. Man. I don't can count already. They just keep coming and coming, which is fine. I like it because it, it maximizes my time there. And then I ministered at several different other locales where, and I even got to pray for some people at the hotel my son works at because he always tells them, you need healing. My father pray for healing him. <laughs> then he steps back. I'm like, bro, I came for lunch. <laughs> well, it's all right because that's, that's what we're here for, amen? We're here to serve each other, amen? So God is good, right? You all good? I'm good. You know, God can use me. I'd rather wear out than rust out, amen? That means I was just sitting around if I rust out. So if I wear out, that's better, yeah. And for me, praying for a lot of people, because I'm 6'2 on my good days, 5'8 on the bad one, will first exist in our mind so any limitation anytime the enemy tries to put in some kind of a reason why you cannot that's just a tactic that he uses to freeze you to stop you how many of you have a maybe if i say all of you are called to preach and some of you are like you crazy i don't can talk in public you stay nuts yeah that's a limitation that the enemy puts in your mind i had the same things you know when i took up speech class in intermediate and had to speak in front of everybody and you get the uh, 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 and it looks like black coming in I used to get that too and I went to college and I had a C in speech hallelujah I almost failed the class because I was rocking the podium and talking any kind and looking around not, look, make, not making eye contact and, yeah but look what I do for a living. Here's to my professor in college. <laughs> anyway, I did all right. And so can you. You can overcome those things. Amen. All right, so back to your notes here. If our mindsets are limited, our lives will also be limited. All right? We must renew our minds with the Word of God. So the only thing that's going to renew your mind is the Word of God. And the Word of God in John 1, 14 is Jesus. He is the Word that became flesh. 
He is the living word. So anytime you spend time in the Bible, how many know you're spending time with Jesus? Anytime you're spending time with Jesus, you're spending time with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the word that you spend time with. And so, somebody just asked me, let me ask you something. And when they say it like that, you're like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> let me ask you something. How you get all the stuff you get? This is what I told this young gentleman. I said, first, you got to pay attention. Ding, ding, ding. Because you got to pay attention to what you're reading. You, just, you cannot just read like it's comics. You got to pay attention to what you're reading. And you got to pick it apart. And you got to let the Holy Ghost use your knowledge to, that sets you free. And how many you know that you're not going to get free just by knowledge? You're going to get free by working and walking in the knowledge that you enjoy. Yeah, all the knowledge in the world never did just, you know, a rocket doesn't get built just because you know how. You got to go build a rocket. You know what I mean? So all of us in here, a lot of us have these grand schemes in our mind. One day I want to do this. But after I watch this program on TV... You know what I mean? You gotta, how, how are you going to do that if you never leave your house? Mm, I had an uncle like that. He was, uh, my grandma's sister was married to this Filipino, and his brother was, uh, he was a bachelor his whole life. So this guy had these ideals. He had these great ideas, but only when he was sitting in McDonald's downtown. Because that's all he used to do from morning till night. Sit in the downtown McDonald's, the old one, and tell everybody about his ideas. And people say, that's a great idea. You should go do it. He goes, nah, nah, nah. I don't like be too rich, you know. Obviously, he never liked be too smart either. So you can have all the great ideas in the world, but if there's no action attached to it, what are you going to do? You get plenty of light bulbs, but you're not illuminating the world. All right? Yeah, kind of dim your chandelier. All right. <laughs> Let's all be bright, shining chandeliers, not the one that get one bulb and it's going like this, like in the 1920s, yeah? All right, so in your notes here, Satan uses three things in our mindsets, okay? And if you, if you want to take additional notes, you can always turn your paper over. Three things in our mindsets to limit us, all right, as Christians. The first one is, obviously... Ignorance. He wants to keep you ignorant of the word, right? He doesn't want you to understand what freedom truly is. And even if you get freedom, because he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. The free indeed is the action attached to the freedom. So if you're not walking in the freedom and you just say, you're, I'm free, I'm free, when the enemy is attacking you in your house and nobody knows about it, how many of you know that you've never left your house? You need to get outside and do some stuff. You need to be challenged all the time. You cannot, and one of the posts that we threw up this week was, the devil is a liar only if you're listening. Amen? How many of you know that? I hear that statement no matter where I go, the devil's a liar. Okay. So you know what that tells me? You're spending more time listening to the devil than you are to the Lord. Amen? How many of you hear that from people all the time? Oh, you know, the devil is after me. How can the devil be after you? You never leave your house. You never preach a word. You never go pray for anybody. How can the devil be after you? What are you doing that is so important that the devil would chase after you? Amen? There's only two instances, right, in the whole Bible. Job was one where the devil himself came to present himself before God and God sent him. Go ahead. The only other one is when Jesus tells Peter, the enemy, Satan, has asked to sift you as wheat. That's the only two instances that you see the enemy coming after one person in the whole Bible. And people always say, oh, the devil's after me. He's attacking me. Okay, you must be, man, awesome for the devil to only chase you. One devil in the whole universe was created, and he's only after you. Wow. What kind of potential do you possess? Scary. Anyway. You know? <laughs> A difference of opinion sometimes exists in people who don't quite want to change. You know, they always want to make excuses for what they are. How many of you know that this ministry only exists by the victories that it exacts against the enemy and his kingdom? 
We are not very successful if we say we got to come against the devil. That's like saying we're losing, so we need to up our game. Amen. This is not, I'm not a coach at halftime trying to give you the rah-rah to get you to defeat the devil because very, very seldom do people say that we are victorious and we can never lose against the enemy because they always couple that statement like, yes, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, when the devil is defeated and they say, we got to go after the devil because he's attacking us. I don't know what barbed wire fence you are trying to do your high wire act on but eventually you're going to slip and fall and have a nice little barb up your crack that's what christians always do they like to play this tightrope act and say hallelujah the grass is greener on the other side yeah well psalm 23 he makes me to lie down in green pastures how many know that that is an old testament scripture he makes me to lie down in green pastures is you he made you sit in heavenly places you see you got to make the correlation between the old and the new there has something has happened amen how many of you are in the green pastures except when you look at somebody else's green pasture go lord why are you blessing them more than me the devil's a liar oh my god you need to get your head out of the toilet. All right. Ignorance. There's a lot of ignorance going on in the body of Christ. And you guys know it because maybe you came here. I don't want to say you were ignorant. You were just less revelated than you should have been by some well-intentioned preacher who didn't have good intentions for you. Amen. Read that under the word ignorance. What does it say? Read that to me. It says, we are cut off from the things we have a right to when we are ignorant of what god's word says so you'll never know what god wants you to have unless you understand the word behind it the scripture behind it that explains what you have not what you lose remember don't ever come from a position of loss and then trying to profit you come from a position of profit that could potentially lose if you don't pay attention to the details amen all right the second thing the enemy likes to use and you see it right there on your paper uh, if you're coming in late, you can get a set of notes if you really want one. If not, just stare at my beauty, like I said earlier. <laughs> Take plenty of pictures so you can caress my face later. All right. <laughs> I'm playing, but some of you are going to be like, yes, yes, best, best. Oh, boy. Don't be rubbing your iPhone like that. No more genie name, Pastor Tim, going to pop out, okay? <laughs> I am human just like you. It's just I'm so far above you. I just play. Look at you guys. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Look, I wore slippers tonight. You guys believe? Yeah, look. Okay. Hot. Even a slipper's hot. Uh, I was 6'2, now I'm 5'9. All right. Some, some of you ladies are like that. Mm hmm. What is number two? Deception. Say it. Deception. The enemy is a, he's a liar for real. And he uses deception. But he can't lie to you if you won't receive deception. Amen? And this is where we're at. Satan wants to deceive us by making us think the truth alone will make us free. However, we must read that. It's underlined and bold printed. Continue in the truth of God's word to be free you got to walk the word out you can't just do it like when you wish upon a star hallelujah you like me sing like bing crosby la da do do la da do do in the body of christ anyway all right how many of you saw the meteor shower in hilo yeah the satellite that was, and everybody's like what is it Oh, is it the end of the world? Well, if there's a fireball coming in the sky, I would say just run under it and try and catch them. Why not? Why not? Might be worth something. Space junk is always worth something. Amen? You know what the greatest meteor in the history of the world is? When a Christian gets a revelation and doesn't use it. 
That was cool. And then they go back to doing nothing. Amen. You know what the other one is? When you see somebody that needs prayer and you say, Oh, Lord, I would love to see them healed. <laughs> I don't know who you're going to use for that, but praise God. It's you. You don't want to notice it. God wants to use you. And just say, hey, you need prayer? Ask Pastor Tim. <laughs> you better shut up your head right now, all of you. <laughs> if you see a need, you can ask, but you can't force prayer. That's witchcraft. But you can't offer it. How are you feeling? You strike up a conversation and see what they say. You never know. We had a lady uh, out there in Waimanalo the first time I went. You know, she, she came up to me the other day and she goes, Oh my God. You know, I'm Portuguese lady tell you, Oh my God. You know, something big happened. And then she said, Jesus, Mary, Holy Ghost. Oh my God. That's serious business right there. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. She mentioned all the saints. Hallelujah. Nah. You know, she had, she had scoliosis. You know what scoliosis is, right? She had an S in her back, basically. And she had a big quasimodo hump on her back, like, you know, like a human camel. So she had a big hump the first time. And I prayed for her. And I told her, you know, this thing, this thing can be healed because I've seen it before. And I prayed for her. And then she coughed and she gagged. And they do whatever they do, you know. And sometimes they mess the floor or whatever, right? But, well, she came back and she's like, oh my God. She go, look at my back. And it was straight. The whole spine is straight. The, the muscle is still bigger because for so many years she's bent over, right? And she was working that muscle. So it's like a guy that was doing curls with one arm his whole life. So you get one Popeye arm and one skinny arm. So I told her, well, you know, this muscle, it's nice and flat now. I said, but the muscle is big because it was working all that time. And she said, I don't even care about that. I ain't a surge. I don't care. I told a priest and I told everybody. I said, look at my back. I said, well, praise the Lord, man. And she's like, unbelievable. I said, well, you better go from unbelievable to believable because it happened. Amen. How many of you like those kind of testimonies and things like that happen? You know, those things are still happening today, right? How many of you are saved? Well, Jesus still raises the dead. Look, you were spiritually dead, now you're alive. Hallelujah. Now what are you going to do? Ah, it's a surge. There you go. Yeah, he still raises the dead. You know, we prayed for that lady Sunday if you were here. I won't say all of you were here, but some of you were here. That woman that came, that I um, went to white man, I prayed for her. She was legally blind. She came and gave her testimony. She can see. Well, you know, and that was live testimony for those of you that never come on Sunday. Poor thing, you. <laughs> but she's good. She can read now. She can drive again at night. She can, you know, she can. She said everything was blurry. Well, God still does stuff like that, and I never have to go grab dirt and spit in them, make mud and rub her eye. Amen. There's enough of that being thrown in the body of Christ's eye already. Christians are good at slinging mud. So everybody should be healed then. Uh, you guys will catch that someday. So John 8, 31 and 32, you guys are looking at it, right? Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, how many of you know when that statement is said to the Jews that believed him, there must have been Jews that don't believe him. Does that make sense to you? Let's be obvious people here. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. He whom the Son sets free is free. Okay. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall. You guys reading the same one? It says make you free. You guys said set you free. You guys not can read. <laughs> Why that's important is because it'll make you free. It means they weren't free at the time. It had to take place that Jesus had to finish a work. He had to come to a place of a finished product so that not only will this statement be prophetic, it'll be an answered prophecy. So all of these things, again, are answered things. They're completed things. So if we read it correctly after the finished work, so what is Jesus saying today to you who believe him? Are you abiding in his word? 
Here's a real simple thing. Where are you seated? In? Oh, so you are abiding in his word. And his word is him because he's the word that became flesh. You guys see, I'm losing some of you guys. Go drink coffee right now. He's got to wake up. And you shall know the truth. How many of you know the truth? Well, it's tricky because the truth is Jesus. How many of you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Then you know the truth. Oh, but I don't. You low, low. You're not going to know him up here. You're going to know him in here. All right? So you, how many of you know Jesus? Okay. So you know him. So the truth isn't going to make you free. The truth has already set you free. So you know Jesus. You're free. So the one thing that keeps you in bondage is mindset. You guys catch that now? So how many of you are free in Christ Jesus? Yeah. The free indeed part is you're free not just in word but in deed. In deed meaning in action. Hallelujah. I wonder if that one is on time. Okay. And you know the truth so the truth has already made you free. Amen. So how free are you? I'll tell you it is. You're only as free as your pastor allows you to be free. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm just telling you. I just say it like it is. I don't beat around the bush. I just tell you the truth. How many of you like that you're free? Good. Now go be free indeed. In your works, in everything you do, you're still free. How many of you like to enjoy a beer? I see some of your Facebooks. Drink up. Just don't get drunk. Amen? Because remember, any, anything that messes with your mindset and alters it, I mean, you know, it's not going to be good for you anyway. So what else is not good for you? Smoking dope. Do I have to explain that to you guys? <laughs> All of you look like you were on dope just then. Like. Well, well, what's your point, Pastor? <laughs> You see how quiet they got? There was no amens there. It was just like... Some of you shifting the lighter in your pocket as I'm talking. Like... <laughs> oh, boy. Now you're free, but do things wisely. Amen. How many beers does it take to be legally drunk? Well, it depends on your weight. So some of you are out because you can't even drink half a beer because you're all boss up already. If you breathe in the breathalyzer on half a beer and it registers that you're drunk, how many you know that you're small? Most of you ladies can do a 12-pack. No problem. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't take it personal. So, I'll fix you, Pastor. I'm going to drink 11. Boy, all right. So how many of you are free? Good. How many of you are free indeed? Good. If you pray for somebody and nothing happens, how many of you know you're still free indeed because you did what was required of you? You just laid hands on the sick. You can always rely on the, and they shall recover. <laughs> but hey, it's worth a shot. What if they get healed instantly? I always was a person when I first started this journey, I was like, hey, what if? I always was a person of what if. I always dared to dream. Hey, if I lay hands on them and they get healed, then I get credit. If they're not, then I say, and you shall recover. <laughs> you just file that away under you shall recover. Amen. And I found out one thing is that there's a gift of healing in Ephesians, right? That sometimes when you lay hands on the sick and they don't recover, then you need the gift of healing to come in and be the catalyst that blows out whatever the reason is for them not being healed. And lo and behold, the Lord gifted me with that. So I, I'm able to see a lot more things than most people. But that doesn't stop you from laying hands on the sick. I mean, you know that you can lay hands on yourself every single day. Amen? Not like this. I am my God. Oh, I don't can't believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you trying for? Find the hole where the marble fall in to activate the button? I always say that, you know, people... Every time you baffle somebody and they turn there, they go, huh? The marble, they're trying to find the hole, you know, like the game. You're trying to... Then it goes, it hits the hole. Ding! And they're like, oh, okay, I got him. Mm-hmm. All right, so don't be a person that's puzzled. 
How many like miracles? Yeah, me too. You showed up on a Wednesday. I know I plan if you come on Wednesday because it's not hot. Mm. Or do you have another reason? Anyway, all right. All right. That is good. Third thing that the enemy messes with your mindset. What's the third thing? Distraction. What's a distraction? Well, for everybody is different. You know, football season coming up, so everybody is like, oh, no. Marcus Mariota. He played 10.30 on Sunday. So I'm looking at all your faces. I'm filing away. <laughs> hey, get DVR, bro. Digital video recorder. Right? I'm ready to put Marcus Mariota right here. With the volume off so you guys can at least see. Some of you are like, oh, I will come to church for that. Shut your mouth. So what is a distraction? It's right under the word distraction. What is it? An intrusion of the mind that causes confusion. And we know one thing. Jesus is not the author of confusion. That's what the word says. So who is the author of confusion? If he makes your head go like that. Huh? Hallelujah. You know what is one marker of people who leave this church? I'll just share this with you. They always have questions about what I teach. And the reason they have questions about what I teach is because they don't study what I teach. They just look at it and say, Oh, no, 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 no. Incoherent statements. No, 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 no. My former pastor said that. No, no, no. But they never bother to go find out the truth. Are you getting an education in here about past tense, present tense, and future tense? That is my only job is to point out to you past things, present things, and future things. And all of it by the finished work of Jesus. How many of you like that? You never heard that before. That will take you from down here with the rest of the turkeys. And put you up someplace up there with the angels. All right? How many of you like that? You know, I can tell you right now, if you understand what I'm talking about when I say the finished work of Christ, how many of you know that you are already 99% smarter than all your Christian friends? 99%. You know why? It's because nobody wants to be on the finished side. Because on the finished side of Christ's work is personal responsibility. Everybody say personal responsibility responsibility so who's accountable for what you learn you not me on the other side here's what it is if you are a person that always talks about the devil and the devil's a liar and we are one day going to be this and that and one day and maybe someday we hope how many know that now you're laying blame on somebody else hello you guys good how many of you like your personal responsibility? Here's the personal uh, responsibility that you enjoy. He whom the Son says free is free indeed. So who's free indeed? You are. So if something happens in your life, it ain't the devil, boys and girls. It's you jumping down for Thanksgiving to find you a perfect turkey to slaughter. Everybody's looking for a turkey they can blame. Amen. Now, we got to stop blaming. We got to stay on the finished work and say, all right, if something's not happening, it's because it's not time yet, but it will. It will. I just got to stay seated and stop jumping off the throne to go chase the turkeys or the chickens, like we say, right? All I know is you keep throwing corn out there or wheat or rice, so the turkeys, the chickens all come to you. You don't have to chase. Amen. You see, this is a different kind of gospel than has been taught for a long time. Why was it laid upon me to teach this? I don't know. Maybe I was the only guy paying attention at the time. That's the only way I can explain it because like you, I've heard every possible theory about the second coming of Christ. The rapture. You guys all heard about the rapture, the second coming, the judgment day. How do you know that that stuff already happened? 
There was a judgment. Remember, there was a three cross judgment that happened already. People always want to wait for the great by and by. They stop living today. Hallelujah. Do you know that there are some Christians out there? How many of you know this lady's story, the, the court clerk in Kentucky that went to jail for not issuing same sex? Now, some of you may have an opinion. Here's my opinion You were hired to do a job, do your bloody job. Don't bring your personal agenda into your job. All right? Hallelujah. You guys understand what that means? Hmm? Yeah? All right. You're hired to do a job, do your job. Now she's saying, I don't know if I can do it. Fire her. You're fired. Get out of here. You can't do the job. Get out. You know, our job is not to be the judge, jury, and executioner of all people who are gay. Who cares? I don't sleep with them. Amen? If I roll over and get one man behind me saying, Hi, honey, is something wrong with me? Because I don't like that. But if you like that, have fun. I don't care. You got to do that. Hopefully he shave. Okay. I don't care. I, people always try and block me. In. Well, Pastor, what do you feel about same-sex marriage? I don't know because I'm not going to marry one same sex. I had a lady recently in the mainland tell me this. I have never been married. I've always been married to my dogs. To me, that's way more bizarre than same-sex marriage. You're married to your dog. I don't know. She says, if I could, I'd get a license to marry my dogs because they will never hurt me. All right, so, all right. Do you think that's weird? Some of you like, but would you go out there and protest? Oh, I am against same-sex marriage with dogs. You cannot marry your dog or your cat or your parrot or your parakeet or your turkey or your, or your horse. Or... You know why? It makes you seem like a fool when you take a stand against something else, right? That's an easy one to, you can, you know, religious people are religious people. You saw all these people, a uh, civil service worker doesn't do their job and all the Christians come out with their crosses. All right, I'm discombobulated, that's for sure. Why you guys don't just go and love people? You know that Jesus hung out with the worst of the worst? You guys know that, right? Because here's one that we were in. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, where was the ones that never believed Jesus? Not listening to Jesus talking to them. Jews are another word for religious people. But there were some Jews in this segment of time that believed in Jesus. Amen? How many know that not all religious people are okay? Yeah? You know, how many know that the Ku Klux Klan was a Christian organization started to be racist and to eliminate black people? And not only black people, but brown people, yellow people, red people. If you weren't lily white, something was wrong, right? Y'all come back now, you heal. Anyway, that was a Christian organization. Amen. Now, think about it. How many of you would protest against the Ku Klux Klan? Maybe, but would you have the same fervor as same-sex marriage or the Ku Klux Klan? Well, one of them's a little more dangerous than the other one. So people would pick their battles wisely, right? I'm so against this same-sex marriage, guys. Okay, calm down. Just go home and pray. Study your word. Stop judging people. Jesus said, judge not unless you be judged. You know what people do, Christians? They're famous for. <laughs> Why? And you know the one thing about this clerk in Kentucky? She was married four times. You guys knew that, right? He has never, he has never read that part. Said that she was married four times already. Wow, the Catholic Church would have something to say about that because you cannot be divorced in a Catholic Church. So, I mean, you know, there's another segment of religion would protest her, and then she protesting something. Yeah. Pretty soon, everybody gonna protest everything. I'm gonna protest five dollar Fridays at Safeway. 
because it's not fair to have to stand in line for, they tell you 30 minute wait for fried chicken and turns into 90 minutes. I'm going to protest. I might as well because I'm there for more than 90 minutes anyway. So I might as well put up one sign. Safeway is unfair to people who get more than $5. What if I'm willing to pay full price? Would they give me my chicken early? You see, so I'm protesting all you Filipinos and Chinese and all people who love chicken. <laughs> see, you can find a protest anywhere, am I, am I right? What can we protest as a church? I know, let's protest against religious people, which is what we've been doing for a few years now. We're just not holding signs. You know, religious people, no matter what sign you hold, they don't can read them anyway. Because they're blinded from the truth. <laughs> you get that later. <laughs> it's the truth. People are blinded from truth. And you know what the truth is? The very truth that he taught you. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Here's the truth. Love conquered all. That's the only truth that exists. Because even before he dies, he said, love your neighbor as you love God and you love yourself. So, I mean, it always goes, traces its roots back to love. God created Adam and Eve because of love. He decided he wanted children that he could love. Amen. How many of you feel love some days? I can tell you when you don't feel loved. When you catch every red light, all of a sudden you think the devil is out to get you. But it might be Jesus slowing you down to pray more. Shut up. <laughs> Some of you like, shut up. <laughs> hey, what if? What if there's an accident that I, how many you ever rolled past an accident and then did the rubber net? But if you were speeding, that might have been you. Oh, what? So you better thank the Lord that you weren't the one that everybody was looking at on the stretcher with the neck brace. Hey, I know her. Hallelujah. <laughs> I met this kid today, a Samoan kid. You know what he told me? He was led to believe by his grandma his whole life that the ultimate warrior from the... You guys remember WWF back in the day? The ultimate warrior was his father. He, he was an illegitimate child. That was his real father. And you know what happened? When the ultimate warrior died, he said everybody was Facebook messaging him. How are you? You okay? And then his grandma said, that's not your real father. I was only joking. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's funny. I'm kind of sick that way. But anyway... But he was laughing because he said, you know, he thought his whole life that the ultimate war was his Samoan father, his real father. And then the guy died. And how many know that that's the cruel irony of life, that the enemy has you believe something your whole life. And then in the end, when you take your last breath and you get to him, you go, oh, yeah, that liar. You don't want to wait till you get to heaven to find out the truth because the truth, <laughs> so have already made you free. He whom the Son says free is... So there you go. You're not only set free, you're free indeed. There's no falsehoods that can overtake you. Amen? You all good with that? All right, I'm good. Hallelujah. Now here you can look on your notes, right? An intrusion of the mind that causes confusion. Satan uses care. Oh, you know that he uses those things. Cares, worries, anxieties, and busyness to distract us. The distractions he sends are designed to disrupt our consistency in the word. All he wants to do is stop you from learning the word the proper way. All right? So a lot of people, how many of you get good teaching when you come here? So some of the best teaching I'll have you know was when you wasn't here. <laughs> oh, too bad the devil got you that day. All right. You think I'm joking? No, yeah, I am. You can always listen to it, right? But, hey, I like your face, so keep coming. You guys all right? You guys never believe that statement. Nobody said amen, so you all think you're ugly. Okay, we'll go with that. I miss your face when you're not here. You guys understand? I miss your face. Do you miss my face when I'm not here? All right. 
part of you. That makes me feel good. <laughs> Next Thursday, I leave for New York City. How many of you are going to be in church on the following Sunday? Five. Okay. Six. Seven. Okay. Good. All right. So, no worry. Somebody will have something to share with you. You okay with that? Okay. You know that we are breeding a new breed of pastor. Oh, you know the pastor Jeff and pastor Denise. They they really coming full circle because they were hardcore Pentecostals, hardcore. When they first came and they heard a lot of what I was teaching, this was their reaction to it. <laughs> oh, you know sometimes it's foreign language to you when you, there's too much freedom. You like, wait a minute, I was bred to be a pit bull for Jesus. And then all of a sudden, I got to be on Pomeranian. <laughs> I went to this house. Auntie P. Ilani, I guess she left her dog in Waimanalo with the family over there. Right? Auntie Blanche, guys. And this dog, cute dog, but always barking at everybody. I'm like, not for it. I try to pray for people. And they were like, oh, yeah, that dog. Uh. I said, you know that dog needs Zoloft. <laughs> that dog is depressed and angry. The dog came by my feet and said, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. You know the dog went under the chair, go sleep a little while. <laughs> I don't know, they named the dog Buddha. I said, you guys are all Catholics. I am Buddha. I'm a Pentecostal. I, you guys all need crazy pills. All of you. What's the dog's name? Buddha. And no wonder you grouchy. You're hanging away all these Catholics and you Buddhists. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cute dog, though. I think it's some kind of chow, Pomeranian mix. Uh, old, grouchy Chinese man. Yeah, I think it's all mixed in there someplace. Say, coolie, coolie, already. Go over there and pray. Back me up in prayer. <laughs> Grouchy dog. I'm going to put Zoloft in your food. Some of you are like that when you wake up. You guys taking your pills? Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hey, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Over here. Hey, if you get, you better share. There's some guys in here that need. They just never did try. Okay. I was married to a person that was on the pills. Call them the happy pills. When they take them, they're happy. Ultra happy. Happy. The feet don't even touch the ground. Happy. <laughs> then they think they healed. They stop taking them. All of a sudden, they face on the ground, dragging on the carpet. <laughs> think you better take the pills. No, I'm good. <laughs> Come over in the frying pan sticking out of my TV. How did that happen? And my son looked at me, he goes, I don't know. Dad, can we buy a new TV? I think we gotta buy a new frying pan. A kind that no can throw. <laughs> Why did I bring that up? Because some of you need some pills. Anyway, all right. All right, you guys are there, right? Distractions, the dis distractions that the enemy sends are designed to disrupt our consistency. You guys know that, right? What is the number one? What is the number one enemy of your soul? Your mind, will, and emotions. What is the number one enemy? Is this not being focused on the word at all times? That's it. That's it. You know how you be focused on? People used to wear these bracelets in the '90s, early 2000s. What would Jesus do? Hmm. What would Jesus do? And I remember all the ladies used to wear them. They, they had pink ones, light blue. And I, mean, I remember when I was at a Christian function thing and all the ladies were serving food and this is what they were doing. Oh, we were feeding the homeless. So they all had these what would Jesus do, WWJD, and they were serving food. And this homeless guy, can I have a little more of that? Like, no. You need to wait till everybody get who you special or something. And the other three ladies, yeah, 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 yeah. All of a sudden, it sounded like crows. Wah, wah, wah. 
Then I went behind him. Well, ladies, I know what Jesus wouldn't do. Because <laughs> I'm sarcastic. Like, I like to make trouble. And they're like, well, everybody got to have. I said, but Jesus, multiply fish and bread. Huh? Huh? You know what was the truth? We not going to get if we give all them. Oh, come on. We cannot make your mumu too tight. <laughs> I told one lady that. She's like, you rotten, you. Auntie, calm down. You know, you guys need some more. We can just pray and we can go cans after or something. Go McDonald's. Never mind. Why you like eat this secondhand food anyway? It was all food from Hilo Hawaiian. You know, the... The leftovers they donate and they was feeding. They go, yeah, yeah, we not gonna have you. Like, why would you wanna eat that anyway? You get money, go buy your own. Why do you eat that kind? I remember they had one bowl of goldfish crackers. You know, goldfish crackers are awesome, right? How many of you like goldfish crackers? But when it comes stale, it's probably the worst thing you could ever eat in your entire life because it's all gummy on your teeth and it's like. Nah, nah. Yeah. And one lady, she's like, no, don't give them that. I want that. I was like, okay. I look at, it was four months past expiration already. And she was like guarding that like Buddha. <laughs> oh my God. Like, why would you try and, try and get something that's already been given out to somebody else? Man, calm down. That's what a lot of Christians, they like to take, not give. Yeah, how many of you know people like that? None of you, right? You're all being transformed by the renewing of your minds, right? Say amen. Come on now. And a lot of you like looking at me like... Okay, we're all being transformed by the renewing of our minds. And add to the back of the minds, put E.T. Oh, no. You guys slow. Moving right along. Mindset control. We all got a mindset, right? But we got to use it properly. Now, to be consistent in your notes in the things of God, we must have the right motive for doing what we do. Motives are everything, right? Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you looking for personal attention? Be careful of any Christian that only talks about themselves. Only I can do that because I got to be the preacher of hell. I just play. Uh, you get people like that. You know, you're talking to somebody, hey, yeah, they ask you, how are you doing? Well, you know, I was in, and then all of a sudden, yeah, but for me, you know what I do? This is where I was. This is what I get. This, I'm like, oh, my God. You just asked me how I was doing, and you just went on a tirade on telling me how you were doing. All of a sudden, you're like, you can't even spit the words out of your own face. Like, oh, okay, yeah, tell me about your life. Go ahead. And then it never ends, and then they walk away. I, I never got to share. Anyway, I mean, you know people like that. Oh, well, yeah, we know some people like that. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes they hate get hard time fit in and out the door. You guys know some people like that? Oh, I know some people like that. You know, look at the back of the hat. If it's on the last button, something wrong. they tight. <laughs> In the head. <laughs> all right, you guys all good? Remember, being a Christian is not about titles. It's about servitude. How good you're doing for others rather than yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. You guys all understand, right? Okay, so you guys know that we are looking at a piece of property up. Yeah? All right, so what are you doing to help us get that? Because I cannot be the only guy go get them. Because if I got to go work to go get them, you guys not going to see me. You guys going to get them, but I'm not going to be here. I just saw a UFO fly through here. Oh. You guys trying to jump on the UFO? <laughs> now we all got to work together. Amen. So everybody come up with 10 grand. We'll be all right. Amen. Okay, 25 then. Okay. Good. All right. You guys can. If you tell the Lord, Lord, I don't have it, but I'm willing to give it if it comes through me. You know what he's going to do? He's going to test you. 
He'll give you 10. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if the church deserves this now. I've got to think about this. You know, I've had associate pastors in the past that have promised the moon. And you know what I got? Not even one flashlight. That's the truth. You know, we've had leaders that come through here, breeze through and say, Oh, I'm going to, you know, the Lord. Even come up here sometimes. The Lord has spoken to me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to roar. And you know what we get? Blah. blah nothing. You know what? We got to do something smart. Amen. Now, we're paying in here 4000 a month. How I many of you know that we can afford a monthly payment? So go find me a loan. I'll pay it. Is that cool? Or we can go debt free and everybody come up with it and we're cool. All right? How many of you like a nice place with a swimming pool, tennis courts, and a country club? And... Okay, then you all gotta come up with 100,000 each. <laughs> I'm glad you see some of the hands. Yeah, praise God. Well, 100 grand each. Let's go. You guys like that finer life? We can do that. Amen. Otherwise, some of you better be flying to Vegas. Mega box. Yeah. <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, I'm down for that. Anyway, if anybody's going to Vegas, I'm out. All right. All right, let's look at the scripture here. Some of you are getting bored. Shut up. Ephesians. You guys, how many of you know about Ephesians? This is the amplified version, right? All right, you guys see it? Ephesians 3, 14 to 18. Read that. For this reason, grasping the greatness of, his, of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ. How many of you know that we're all one in this? There's no separation. You know that there's no such thing as a separation of sinner and saint either. I can show you that in Ephesians 2, the same one we always quote. It's an all-inclusive gospel. But Christian, religious people like to separate and divide. All right? I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. God, the first and ultimate Father. You see that in 15, from whom every family. Okay, I'm just pointing that out because it said every Right, there's no separation. Right. May he, 16, grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and length and height and depth of His love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love. My endless love. Oh, my God. You know, religious people love to sing Christian songs only. They only like to listen to Christian songs. They only like to entertain Christian things. You know what? How many of you like some other kinds of music in your past? Yeah? You know how you can tell a religious person? This is what they do. When a song comes on the radio from their past, before they were a Christian, all of a sudden they know all the words. And then they do this, oh, <laughs> but, but that was my past. Oh, 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 oh. Running with the devil, and they know that song. Oh, 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 but I don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. You stupid fool. You know, the stylistics had some of the greatest hits of all time. You remember the stylistics? And you know, one of the greatest ones we break up to make up. That's all we do. First, you love me, then you hate me. It's a game for. Fools. Oh, you guys know the lyrics? Oh, but uh, that was in my past. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys see? We all have our past. I mean, you know, you got to embrace your past and be proud of where you came from. Maybe not proud of the things you did, but you get experience. Miss Lomi, Lomi, Lomi. 
get plenty experience. Uh, how many of you get plenty of experience? I can tell you what you have plenty of experience in. Hurting people but not knowing you hurt them. You know why? You hurt them but you never paid attention to hurt them. Then you find out later, you hurt me. Huh? For real? Wow. Wow. I had somebody from my past, you know, yeah. High school, I was a nice guy. I treated everybody nice. You know, I went to my class reunion and somebody said, you know, one time you hurt me. What? For real? And they're like, yes, you hurt me. I said, how did I hurt you? He said, I gave you my phone number. You never called me out. You ever thought maybe I'd never get him? This is not the kind I can ignore like now. <laughs> Hey, you know what? They gave me the number. I lost them. <laughs> Still with the paper, that's why. 30 years later, after high school, I was writing on there, here, here my number. I was like, I, I lost it. I, I really lost the number now. Yeah, they, they said I hurt them in high school when I was 15 or 16 or something. I guess I was, I was somebody back then. This girl, she gave me her number. I lost the number. I, you know, I never have Rolodex back then. I don't know what Rolodex now. I had to apologize for something I never know I did, but she held on to it for 30 years. Well, actually, 16, 32, 33 years. I was like, I'm sorry. And she said, you can call me now, though. Call you what? Sister was big. Huh? Call you for lunch, dinner, and breakfast? Wow. Hallelujah. Well, some people are hurt. How many of you hurt people? You never know. And then you come to find out later you hurt them. And then you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I hurt you. Uh, some of you don't even know you hurt somebody. They're still in the corner crying someplace, smoking ice down a la park. You don't even know you hurt them. It's the Paneva right now, walking around, wondering why you hurt them so bad. Hey, you never know. Some of you deliberately hurt people. You know you do. Not do, you did. If you're doing, we need to pray for you right now. Get up here. Give me the oil. Give me the big one. Oh, man. See, we don't know. We don't know how many people have been affected negatively by our lives, right? We don't know. All you can do is be good for the next one. Amen. Be good. All right. He has good. All right. So be here. The enemy cannot contain us when we are operating in the love, the love of God. All right. God wants us to be strengthened with might by His Spirit. Might is an anointing of the Holy Spirit. It is the ability to do all things. And here's your scripture, if we can get that up there. All right. This is Isaiah 11, Old Testament scripture, right? Uh, Old Testament is always a type and shadow of what was to come. So how many know that if it's a type and shadow of what's to come, you are in the finished work, so it has come. You're not waiting for it. All right. If you read verse 1, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. All capitalized, speaking of Jesus. All right? The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Now, how many know that that's all finished stuff? He came, his name was Jesus. Now you're seated in heavenly places in him. So, what do you possess? The Spirit of the Lord, obviously. Wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You don't fear the Lord because you've, of a earthly, worldly fear. You, you know, there's, in fact, there shouldn't be any fear. Reverence. It's a reverence. Fear is turned into honor and reverence. How many know if you love somebody, you honor them? Right? You honor them. With what? Everything. If they, you know, the Mormons do this all the time. If somebody envies something you have, you just give them. Man, what? Huh? I remember my, my colleague at work at the jail. He was a Mormon. He bought two brand new trucks. His mother came home and said, Oh, that truck is nice. He was like, Oh, no. He gave his mother his truck because he bought two. And you know what? 
it was his honor to show his mother that he loved her that much to give her a brand new truck. Yeah, how many of you would like to give away a brand new truck? You can if the Lord funnels that through you, but he can only funnel it through you if you're willing to give it up willingly, quickly, not begrudgingly. All right? So money is a funny thing because money flows. It never stops flowing, but you are the one that stops the flow. All right? So if you're a person that likes to give away money, money always finds its way to you. Some of you are so generous with Walmart and Ross. <laughs> Amen. All right. So it, this again, might, is the ability to do all things. How I many of you have that ability to do all things? I can do all things according to the word in Philippians 4.13. We'll put that one up. All right, in uh, B1B here, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit and we are equipped with might, which lends us to understand Philippians 4.13 as we slide up here. And what does it say? You can all read this. Read it, 13. I, I can do all things, but only through Christ who strengthens me. The word Christ is not Jesus' name, by the way. It's a description of who he is. So Jesus' name is not Jesus H. Christ. Okay, like some people say. Hallelujah. Christ is his description. The anointed one with an anointing. The anointing is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. So Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. And how many of you know that you have the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God because you are seated in Him? Oh, gosh. Some of you get this someday. Someday. If you get that, what I'm teaching, you're already smarter than every pastor in this city except me, no act. Because you got them from me. Can't be higher than your teacher, the Word said. Amen. But there are some guys out here that don't get it. They don't want to get it. So the Pharisees and Sadducees now are the cannot seize and won't seize. I mean, you know, pastor cannot see and pastor wouldn't see and pastor will never see. Still talking about the devil. Telling you you have a devil. Are you kidding me? I, I'm in Christ Jesus. What devil you see? Must be he get devil painted on his glasses looking. Or he put in contacts in with the devil on top. Or he put in the devil picture on the flashlight and shine. There, I see the devil. It's on you. How can you have the devil when you're in Christ Jesus? That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you get that, then you know more than 99% of our Christian brothers and sisters in this city. Then you can go down the beach, drink on Heineken with brother. At the office. Onikaka is the office. One day I'm going to come down and drink one beer with you. How's that? You buying though. Because I cannot go in the liquor store because they're going to see me buying. And I'll... <laughs> you see how religion works? It gets you to think. I cannot go even go buy one beer. I used to think like that. I cannot go buy one beer. I cannot drink one beer. Well, the only reason I stopped drinking is because I was belligerent when I used to drink. I would turn into somebody none of you. You would call me the devil. <laughs> you too. She's she pointing at you. You love her? Okay, good. Oh, okay. See, I don't because, you know, well, I've tried. I've had a... You know what I found now is when I, when I drink a beer, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. But that's not saying that I'm out of the woods because it used to take me about 30 to get to be the devil. So drinking one ain't going to do nothing. Right? I used to drink, you know what I mean? This is what we used to do. We used to go down to Kadora and buy kegs of beer, put them in the back of our, my French truck, and have the inmates shovel the ice out of the ice machine in the kitchen at the jail to cover the truck. And the inmates be over there, like, where the pumps stay, bro? Shut up and shovel the ice. Because it was cheaper to drink that than to keep buying cans and bottles. Talk about your drinking problem. People say we have a drinking problem. I say, I don't want a problem drinking. It goes down real easy. <laughs> Until one night, I went out. Right around the corner over here by Nani Lo Golf Course. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, why is my hands all cut up and swollen? 
and the cops were over there. And my mom said, hey, the cops outside, what you did last night? I don't do nothing. I went drinking. Ma. She said, when did you come home? I don't know. That's a problem. <laughs> Evidently, I had gotten angry because they were cutting me off from drinking because somebody was buying me shots and I was drinking Budweiser. And you know Budweiser is snake oil. Snake oil. Yeah. I threw a pitcher and a bar stool and a mug, had a bouncer, knocked him out, gave him a concussion, broke all the mirrors on the back where the bar was. $6,000 worth of damage later. The cop said, so how do you want to pay for this or get arrested? Well, I got some credit cards around here someplace. Let's, uh, let's settle this up right now. It cost me $6,000 something. Dollars. Was that smart? Here's the thing. It wasn't that smart because I don't remember doing them. Because if you're going to do something, wouldn't it be more fun to remember what you did? <laughs> Hallelujah. I did a lot of things that I don't remember, but I'm legendary for it. Who knew? Anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not smart for me to go out there and start drinking, right? It's not smart for some of you to go do something else too. If you're diabetic eating chocolate cake, it's not smart. Or taking Chantilly cream puffs from Zippies like they're aspirins. No. Because you can overdose on five aspirins. You eat five Chantilly, some of you might be overdosing and wondering, well, I don't know what happened. Well, hey. Everything in moderation. Four. At a time. <laughs> Buy one dozen and sit on them for at least one day. Yeah. You just got to be smart. It's your body. It's your life. Do what's smart for you. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Y'all good? Yeah. I used to eat a plate lunch with a side order of cheeseburgers. Was that smart? Well, when you watching your waistline do the calculations and you're like, wow, how come my pants don't fit today? Hey, something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> something is definitely wrong. Yeah. I used to wear these shirts and they used to be out to here, skin tight. And be like, hey, as long as they don't can see my pico, all good. The third eye, you know what I mean? Some ladies, they show us their third eye, like, whoa. You ha you're smuggling a cyclops under your shirt. <laughs> I just had a lady ask me, just... Two days ago, they asked me, can you pray that I lose weight? I said, well, you got to get the duct tape and I got to wrap around your head about six rounds, but uh, we're going to be okay. She said, you stupid. <laughs> I said, call me pastor stupid. Come on now. <laughs> you got to have jokes, right? I thought, I can pray, but you got to walk it out. Amen. I can pray. She said, well, pray. I said, you know what you should do? Take a handful of salt. Hold them in your mouth and then go eat right after. Like, you stupid. <laughs> All my suggestions, stupid. <laughs> so somebody asked me also, can you pray that I quit smoking? I said, here, two rules for quitting smoking. Two. No buy and no borrow. Can you abide by the two rules before I pray for you? What are the two rules? Repeat it to me. She's like, I will... No buy. Okay. Second one. I cannot promise. Ah, you cannot promise. Oh, this prayer is a crapshoot then. <laughs> no buy and no borrow. Amen. I remember when I used to be a big believer in fasting. Some Christians are big on fasting. We need a 40-day fast. And you know the the church will call a, a full church fast. Everybody got to fast. And you know, as soon as you start the fast, here's what you got to fast from, TV. Because as soon as you start a fast, you turn on the TV. And this is the first thing that happened to me as a brand new Christian. Oh, I got to fast. All right. He said three days. Okay, I can do this. I was already a fat boy. This, this is going to be impossible. Well, he said, we're all going to fast. Oh. Okay. Turn on the TV. The flame broiled whopper. <laughs> oh my God. Are you kidding me? That's like a 
termite going to the bug light. You know what I mean? Just going, ah, I can't stop. Ah. You know what the commercial was right after that one? I was like, oh, okay, that's the devil. The devil's a liar. I don't believe the devil. Ah, I curse you through your roots, you devil. You're trying to get me unholy over here. The next commercial, the very next commercial was an old place in Honolulu. You guys remember? Flamingo chuck wagon. And then they cut in the prime rib. I was like, that's it. That's it. I go and heal a Hawaiian eat prime rib right now. Or the third thing that would happen, I was like, no, the devil's a lawyer. Can't fall into temptation. No, 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 no. Soon as I do that, somebody called me. Hey, brother, what you doing? Ah, nothing. Just uh, kind of cruising along, praying and fasting. Oh, I was just going to take you lunch. Hey, you know what's funny? This is a guy that never paid for a lunch in his life. All of a sudden, he gets inspired by God to take me to lunch as soon as I start on fast. Exactly. That was my theory. You heard her? That's it. God, you don't want me to fast. Can't turn on a blessing because he's hearing Jesus for the first time ever. So we went, and you know where we went? Dick's Coffee House. You remember Dick's Coffee House? Where you could eat a $2.65 steak and rice. And I eat four of them. Brother was paying. Hallelujah. Stack all four steaks on one and just caught them. Then I come to church and the pastor would say, So, how was your fast? How many of you went the whole three days? You see all the religious ladies in the prayer group, four of them. Everybody else like looking on. I was like, I'm not such a failure. Look at all these holy rollers. They rolled right into the diner. Yeah. You see, fasting, I mean, you know, is an Old Testament concept that we try to make new. Hallelujah. You know, my pastor, if you brought blood meat to the church picnic, he would ban you from eating it. I mean, you know that Peter, everything was put on a sheet. Everything's holy. How many of you like pork ribs? Ho, 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 ho. Ho. How many of you like Kaloa pig? Ho, ho. How many of you like Lao Lao? Ho, 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 ho. Huh? Oh, how many of you like ham hocks? Ho, ho, ho. How many of you like ham? Ho, ho. Portuguese sausage? Ho, ho. You know, in the Old Testament, you go in hell, you eat any of that. You know, there's a lot of churches that don't eat pork at all because that's what I'm glad. Old Testament, man. He whom the sun sets free is free if you don't eat pork. Yeah. You know that you can't even eat raw fish. That was illegal. You had to cook them on the fire. Nothing wrong. Can I eat raw food, bro? You know, you Hawaiians all going to hell. That's it. What? That's how religion is. It tries to always cut you off from something good. How many of you like poke? Yeah. Why are you going to hell? Sorry. You'll be sharing your next poke bowl. You like them spicy poke bowl? Yeah, nice and hot in hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's religious people, I tell you. It, it's alive and well. Religion is a sucky thing, man. You know what sucks worse? Religious people. Anyway. All right, you guys all get that, right? All limitations can be removed. We must believe that we can truly do all things through Christ. Do you believe you can do all things through Christ? Then go do something. If you can do anything, go do something. Stop waiting for Him to do them for you. You guys know that the, the way to get wealthy in the body of Christ is to sow money. Right? You sow money, what do you get back? You sow grief, what do you get back? Okay, good. As long as you know the difference. If you sow nothing, what you get? Okay. Yeah, you got to start someplace. Yeah. If you're a taker, you know what you're going to get, right? Smart. See? The multi ones always a smart one. Sarcastic people are the smartest people. Jesus is the most sarcastic person in the Bible. Yeah, your right hand causes you to sin. Cut them off. And what you do with the hand after? Wave bye to the religious people. <laughs> All right, section C. Whomever we love, we honor. Honor the Lord with your substance. Esteem him higher than material things. That's in the Bible. 
The woman with the alabaster box valued Jesus more than the precious perfume she owned. You know why it was easy for her to give that? She was a prostitute. She probably got that as a gift from somebody. You know? Oh, you know the alabaster box was worth a lot and the perfume alone. Some estimates say in today's money, somewhere between fifty and $100,000. She held on to that. It was a sealed box. She broke it open and anointed Jesus. I mean, she was doing the type and shadow for his death, preparing him for death before he died. And that killed off a section of her old self as well. All right. Number two, our love for one another is proof that we have become born-again Christians. How many of you love one another? You're not supposed to have anything against somebody within your own family. You can only hate other people in other churches, not Wait, that never come out right. Nah. We don't hate nobody. More so the ones that worship with you and are learning together. How do you know that if you have a dislike for somebody in here, it's because you are under some improvement. God is trying to improve you. That's why you're going through it. Amen? The only reason you don't like somebody is because you see what you don't like about yourself. So you need to stop. You need to erase. You need to say, wait, 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 wait. What I'm seeing in them is what I got to work on. I got to stop that. Okay, you guys get that? I hope you get that because in a family, God doesn't put like people together for because they're supposed to come and not like each other. You guys understand? You are all similar. That's why he brought you here. Amen? And I'm the father. So guess what? I got to work on some stuff too. You know what people always tell me I got to work on? My sarcasm. You know what I t say to those people? Shut the hell up. Anyway, <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm trying to polish it up. Somebody said, you know, you would be world famous if you would just stop being so sarcastic. But I wouldn't be funny. I'd be religious. So I'd rather have fun than have fame. You guys get that? Yeah. Much like my friends on Puhi Bay. Anyway. Wait, that never come out right. <laughs> nah, I just played. No, you, you can be famous and have fun. Amen. Yeah, look at all these rotten acting celebrities. They're all having fun. And what are they famous for? Being rotten acting celebrities. Well, I'm not acting rotten. I'm just rotten only to religious people. You know, I, I point out the truth where they didn't know there was truth. Then they don't like that. Especially when Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. All the sins went and they're talking about sin. You know what? They get all itchy in the crack. They don't like that. You know, <laughs> you know why? They cannot explain themselves. And that's where Jesus was. He always left them with something they couldn't explain. They would just look at each other, scratching their head like, I don't know what he meant. And if I think he meant what I think he meant, we should kill him for it. So, hallelujah. You all happy? You guys having fun in this church? Good. Tell your friends and family. We have fun over here. It's not all religious. We're not going to have these, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes, yeah, it's good. But other times, it's like, you, know, you guys hear, even when I pray, it's funny sometimes. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. So, B, C1B, she esteemed Jesus higher than well and gave out of her honor and affection for him. How I many of you love this church? Then you give out of your honor and affection for the Lord here. You're not giving to me, right? Yeah, you may so you know all these trips that I go and you sow seed into me? That's not me for the for me going and uh, go only have a good time. You know that I'm working out there, right? People say, Oh, it must be so fun to travel. Anyway, I had a lady on the plane coming home today. You know what she was doing? This was what she was doing. I thought the plane blew out our engine. That's what she was doing, spitting everywhere. And then in front of me, I had on kids screaming, and the father, Howley, it's okay. You'll be okay. I'm like, nobody else is okay on this plane. Hallelujah. And then four rows behind me on the right, another kid screaming. Okay, I know why they're screaming because the ears are popping, right? So the parents should just help them. Pinch their nose, cover their mouth for at least three to five minutes. 
I mean three to five seconds until they blow up the ear. Because what do you do when you got to pop your ear? You pop your ear and you feel better, right? These kids cannot. They don't know. Ah, ah. Pretty soon you like pop the parents right in the eye. <laughs> got to help your kid along. You know what used to work for Megan and Mason? Benadryl. That's the truth. You don't give them like a full adult dose because you don't like wondering if you got to do CPR on your child, you know. Give them a little bit. They relax. They calm down. They go sleep. You know what I mean? Oh, it look like the parents. They're all over there. Yeah, can I have a whiskey? You know, and the kid is screaming. Ah, ah. What about the rest of us? Buy one for all of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Oh, yeah, amen. You guys all happy? Uh, okay. All right. So number two, C two. Our love for one another is proof that we have become born again Christians. How many of you are born again? Then you love. You love the body of Christ, especially the ones you are in the family with in a church. Amen. Our fellow Christians proves that we have not made the transition from spiritual death to life. We did not really become born again. But here we are as a family. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 3 so you guys can see this. Paul wrote in sectarianism. Sectarianism is another word of saying sectioning off, dividing, or separating is carnal. You know what that means? It's fleshly. All right? You guys understand what fleshy is? Worldly? You don't do it. We don't divide. There's no cliques in this house. You all cool? If not, you can go back to where you came from, and I won't feel bad about it. You can go back, okay? Because we're trying to breed a different kind of Christian. A family-loving atmosphere where everybody's transparent and loves each other for real. Not up here, in here. And this is what Paul writes. And I, brethren, because he's talking to church people, and the church is Corinth. The church at Corinth. Could not speak to you as to spiritual people. Alright? There's a difference here. But as to carnal, as to babes, babies in Christ. And this is why. He goes on to say, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are not able to receive it. So it's going to hurt you if you are a sectarianism kind of person. Uh, or if you are a divider. A, a person that likes to uh, put walls in, uh, cliques, divisions. Because there's no division in here. Okay, I'm just a spiritual father. You're all kids. We're all brothers and sisters. That's it. Everybody okay? Don't, don't feel like you're getting scolded. Just get educated. It'll help you better. All right? I fed you with milk, he says, but you weren't able to receive it. Even now, you're still not able, for you are still carnal. Why are they carnal? He goes on to explain it. For where there are envy, strife, and here's the key word, divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men. For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? This is what churches do. And I'll tell you, I was a victim of this. That's why I feel so strongly about it. People would section off. And I found this out. One time, this guy was telling me, oh yeah, tonight we're going to the pastor's house. I was like, what? He said, oh, you, you wasn't invited. I said, no, I don't care. He said, oh, I wasn't supposed to say, oh, oh. I wasn't supposed to say nothing. I was like, you know, I was okay until he said that. Then that brought about inside of me like a rejection. That brought a rejection. You know, I started to get pissed off about that. You know why? Because this is not supposed to be a divide in the body of Christ. Not supposed to be, oh, that's why if you notice in our church, we don't have this kind of men's ministry, women's ministry, right? We don't separate. We're all kids together. We all learn together. You know, these kinds of ministries, it starts to breed a real cesspool of rubbish because these people get off into a group and they start thinking they're better than everybody else. And it becomes a problem, let me tell you. So I'm not big on separating ministries unless it's equal. So if the men have one and the women have one on the same day, same time, I'm okay with that. But not, well, this women, this teens, this, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. Because I try and feed everybody the same meal. Because, you know, we don't move on kids' table. You guys know what I mean? And we don't have the, the in-laws' table. You know, well, oh, the family over here, the in-laws over there, the kids over here. 
You know, no, no, no. If you notice, we are a mixed bag. The most successful and healthy churches are all age brackets, all genders, everybody learning together. That's healthy. That brings about a health. Here's what Paul says, though. He, he breaks it down into three things, the three evil things, envy, strife, division. Everything starts off with envy. That's another way of saying jealousy rooted in rejection. Strife always has its roots in rejection and jealousy. Envy, strife, which brings about a division. So we don't divide. So when I tell you guys something like, we need to not have closed doors in our house. Everybody needs to be. If you have a problem and you want to reject people or cut them off from your Facebook or whatever, you should turn off your Facebook and go back to book book. In fact, you should turn off all your social media if you are a person that separates. Why? Because you are falling into this worldly behavior, carnality. You're having carnality. You know what carnality is? You're having fits of flesh. That means that you need to re-examine your salvation experience. You're being born again. You need to really examine that. Because that means that you were born dysfunctional. You were born deformed. You need to fix that. The deformity is that your head is bigger than your body. You guys get that? Your head is bigger than your body. You get something wrong with your head. That's why he said, if you read it carefully, he's telling you, babies always have bigger heads than their body. That's why they always fall down and hit their head. You guys get that? You get bowling ball head syndrome, right? Kids walking around all off balance, boom, they always hit their head. And that's what he's saying. They're babies because their head is too big. And they, they create carnality, which is rooted in envy, strife, and it leads to division. You know, we've had people come through this church before, and they want to always say, well, pastor, I want to start this ministry. No. Why? Why would you want to go do that? Oh, well, I want to go do this, and I want this, and I want to teach people about this. I even had a guy recently come to me and tell me, I want to teach people uh, how to fight the devil. How? You know what strikes me as funny? Lilo Kalani Park. Some days you pass by, they get these guys having imaginary battles with duct tape knives and swords. I forget what they call it. They have a term for it. It's some kind of crazy. But they're all doing uh, medieval fighting. MR. I don't know. <laughs> but they're doing these things and they're fighting. And you know, <laughs> I asked this one guy one time. He's a nerdy kid. He used to play for me at St. George. I said, what are, you, what are you guys doing over there? And, and you know, he told me, we're fighting dragons. <laughs> Do you feel the heat of the flames coming out of his nostrils? Because this kid was telling me that. His name is Nathan. And I was asking him, what do they do with that? He said, well, we're just having fun. You know, Christians all out there having fun fighting the devil because he's imaginary. He's pretty much gone. He's like defeated. Everybody fighting. And I get people telling me, I'm going to teach, teach the people how to fight the devil. Oh, so you're going to do like miming. You guys know what mimes do? Something like this. What are they doing? Imaginary box. Imaginary things, right? And this is what Christians are doing when they're fighting the devil. Fighting an imaginary opponent. Thinking that they're doing good. You know where the enemy really exists? <laughs> In your big fat head. You need to go fix your bowling ball head. Otherwise you become a baby. So... Did I make my point? I hope so. Some of you need to go examine. If you find somebody that's uh, blocking you off of things, here's my advice to you. Let me know. I'll give them one warning. If they don't heed the warning, I'm going to dismiss them. I don't care who they are. I'm just dismissing them. I'm tired of that religion. I'm not going to have it in my church. Amen? Let alone my family, my church family. We're all good with that. Amen? 
Because like I said before, yeah, I disagree with some people that are my spiritual family in the mainland, but I don't block them. I don't restrict them from seeing my stuff. If people leave my church, I just block them off. Okay, they have no business seeing my stuff anymore. They don't want to come see and sit under my teaching. They can go find it elsewhere. But Spreaker is still open to everybody in the world. Amen. I don't have to want to enjoy their life or their stuff. All right, so everybody good? All right, let's all stand.